Law enforcement in Calgary, Canada, responded to reports of gunshots in the 300 block of Temple View Drive Northeast on April the 7th of 2022. Upon arriving at the scene, they found 23-year-old Jamie Lynn Scheibel, who'd suffered serious bullet wounds. She was rushed to the Foothills Medical Center where she passed away. The prime suspect in the killing was Scheibel's boyfriend, 37-year-old career criminal, Gerald Fromelt, and the incident was described as a domestically motivated homicide. In 2009, Fromelt was one of 35 people arrested in a police sting operation involving Hell's Angels Associates in Winnipeg. The authorities suspected that, among other crimes, from Melt had been trafficking cocaine with the Zigzag Crew, a Hells Angels affiliate. In 2010, he was sentenced to six and a half years in prison after pleading guilty to trafficking cocaine, participating in a criminal organization and conspiracy to launder proceeds of crime. Following his release, he served further jail stints for various crimes that included possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose, being unlawfully in a dwelling house and violating the conditions of his release. A manhunt was launched for Fromelt in the wake of Scheibel's fatal shooting. He was described as weighing roughly 250 pounds on a 6 foot 2 frame and having multiple tattoos on his neck, including that of a straight edge razor. The manhunt lasted approximately one month, a period during which Fromelt was believed to have received help in evading law enforcement. Calgary police eventually arrested Fromelt in the city southwest on multiple charges, including second degree murder. Number 6. Raina Holden In 2015, CCTV cameras outside a pub in Washington, Tynan Weir, England, captured a brutal attack against teenager Raina Holden, carried out by her boyfriend, 22-year-old Daryl Moore. The latter was severely intoxicated and reportedly enraged that Holden had talked to one of his friends. Moore threw drinks at his girlfriend who curled up on the ground in the Cross Keys beer garden before attempting to run away. Moore chased Holden into the parking lot, where he punched and kicked her repeatedly. After dragging her through the lot, Moore continued the onslaught by stomping on Holden's head until she was unconscious. The man kept hitting the teen even after she'd gone limp and only relented when a friend pulled him off her. The attack left the 18-year-old with a dislocated knee, two broken ribs and extensive bruising. She remained unconscious on the pavement for roughly 10 minutes before pub patrons found her and called the police. Holden recovered from the attack while Moore was jailed for 12 months. In the incident's wake, she spent two months in a women's shelter before eventually moving in with her grandfather. Holden spoke to the media after Moore was sentenced and claimed that she believed his punishment had been too lenient after he'd traumatized her, caused her to fear for her life and left her for dead. The teen described the man as her first love and noted that she'd ignored the warning signs even though Moore had become nasty after losing his job as an engineer. Holden reported that she'd even tried to defend him in the attack's immediate wake, but then realized after undergoing counseling that her behavior was a consequence of the abuse she'd suffered. She consequently urged other victims of abuse not to suffer in silence. Number 5. Mandy Johnson 22-year-old Canadian woman Mandy Johnson was gunned down on July the 28th of 2010 as she sat in the passenger seat of a vehicle belonging to her boyfriend, Gator Brown, near Poplar Avenue and Townline Road in Abbotsford. Brown had been the target of an assassination due to his gangland affiliations and involvement in a local dispute known as the Townline Hill Conflict. Brown was present at the scene and the assassin shot at him as well, but he wasn't hit. On October the 6th of 2010, Brown openly plotted revenge in a Facebook post which read, You kill my old lady and not me. Now I am going to make your lives not worth living. He also threatened to name the suspected killers on social media. Six years after the fatal shooting, two Abbotsford gangsters were arrested. 29-year-old Govinda Gruel was charged with manslaughter while Jason Gregory Hempfen, aged 41, was charged with second-degree murder and attempted murder. Updates on the matter indicated that Gruel himself was assassinated in North Vancouver in December of 2017, while Himfin was found not guilty in British Columbia Supreme Court the following year. Brown had reportedly been prepared to abandon his criminal lifestyle, but after Johnson's murder, his life spiraled out of control. He started abusing drugs and carrying a loaded gun. Brown was sentenced to four and a half years in jail in 2012 after leading the police on a high-speed chase in Surrey. Number 4. Kelsey Skillen 
In the spring of 2016, Scottish woman Kelsey Skillen and her boyfriend, James McCourt, returned to their apartment in Milton, Glasgow after a night out. McCourt wanted a cigarette, but realized that his jacket, which had the pack in it, had been left behind. The 19-year-old blamed Skillen for having forgotten the jacket and unleashed a savage attack on her. McCourt immobilized Skillen by pinning his knees against her chest and proceeded to punch her in the head. He also bit into the teen's body, threatened and cursed her out. He hid the keys to the apartment, stashed away 18-year-old Skillen's phone and iPad, and continued beating her. At some point during the four-hour-long attack, McCourt reportedly shouted at his girlfriend, you're going to have a bruised face tomorrow, so I better do it right. When asked by the woman if hurting her was worth going to jail, McCourt allegedly replied that he didn't care as long as she was dead. Skillen tried to scream and bang on the floor in a desperate attempt to get the neighbor's attention, but stopped upon realizing that the commotion only increased the viciousness of her boyfriend's attack. He poured water on the woman when he saw that she was drifting out of consciousness. When McCourt went to the bathroom, Skillen retrieved her iPad, which had almost run out of battery. Still, she was able to contact her mother. The woman quickly made her way to the residence and McCourt fled upon hearing the doorbell. In the aftermath, Skillen posted photos of her severely bruised face and body to social media. She told the police that there had been other incidents in which her boyfriend had attacked her between May the 1st and the 31st. McCourt was arrested and subsequently admitted to assault and detaining Skillen against her will. He was jailed for 21 months as well as ordered to be supervised for eight months after his release and banned from contacting Skillen for five years. Number 3. Bailey Wall on October the 21st of 2019, Mississippi teenager Bailey Wall entered the Microtel Inn in Daphne, Alabama to ask about room rates. CCTV footage showed that moments after Wall had left, her boyfriend, 25-year-old Gary Eubanks Jr., came into the building and demanded cash from the receptionist at gunpoint. The pair then made their getaway in Wall's 2015 black four-door Volkswagen Passat. 18-year-old Wall, who had a young daughter, had started dating Eubanks in August, and it was suspected that he'd forced her to become his accomplice in robbing the hotel. By multiple accounts, Eubanks was physically violent towards the teen. In the weeks leading up to the robbery, she'd sent a friend a photo of herself with a split lip. She reportedly told the friend that she was scared and wanted to go home. Erin Vinson, a woman with whom Wall and Eubanks had stayed in Daphne, would also later report that the teen had told her about her boyfriend's violent outbursts. On October the 23rd, the body of a young woman was found in a wooded area behind a baseball field at Woodward High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. She'd been shot in the head and five days later, the body was confirmed as Walls. Eubanks thus became a murder suspect. Towards the end of October, he was tracked down and cornered by law enforcement at a residence in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After failed negotiations during a four-hour standoff, Eubanks was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head. Number 2. Jasmine Kaur For about nine months leading up to January of 2021, Jasmine Kaur had been in a controlling relationship with 23-year-old Tariq Jot Singh. The latter was described as possessive as he reportedly wanted to decide with whom his girlfriend could spend time. Sometimes when she went out with friends, he'd reportedly call her demanding she return home. The woman ended the relationship on January the 4th and subsequently reported Singh to the police as he'd begun stalking and harassing her. Singh threatened to hurt himself and confronted Kaur at her workplace, an aged care home in North Plimpton, Adelaide, Australia. He'd reportedly begun to blame her for their relationship's downfall and became angry that she wouldn't take him back. In an attempt to humiliate Kaur in the eyes of her family, Singh showed her relatives videos of them in a hotel room and various other private circumstances. Kaur contacted law enforcement after he'd sent the private clips to her mother, who lived in India, causing the woman to become severely distressed and upset. On February the 9th, the police cautioned Singh for stalking. Less than a month later, on March the 5th, Singh again went to Kaur's workplace. He'd purchased the shovel and cable ties from Bunnings beforehand. Singh abducted his ex and CCTV would show him subsequently driving north with her out of view, presumably restrained in the back seat or in the trunk. He headed into the Flinders Ranges and Kaur was never seen alive again. On the evening of March the 6th, 
The police went to Singh's home to ask about his ex-girlfriend's whereabouts. Suspicions arose when investigators learned that Singh was supposed to work a shift at a local pub on the night of Kaur's disappearance and that he'd asked a housemate to fill in for him. Singh eventually admitted that Kaur was dead and that he'd buried her but denied murdering her. On March the 7th, he led officers to the spot where he'd buried her in the Flinders Ranges, north of Hawker. The woman's body was found in a shallow grave under about 12 inches of sand. She was blindfolded while her feet and hands were bound with cables. There were cuts to her throat, but they were superficial and not the main factor in her death. It was determined that the woman had been buried alive and had succumbed to actively breathing in and swallowing soil. Singh was taken into custody and in July of 2023 pleaded guilty to murdering Kaur as an act of revenge for rejecting him. He faced a mandatory life sentence with a non-parole period and his sentencing was scheduled for August. If you have not yet seen our video on when going on a first date goes wrong, then we have that one lined up for you right after number one. Stick around if you'd like. Number one. Las Novias de la Union On June the 9th of 2019, Mexican woman Paulina Ariola Perez was lured into a meeting and assassinated in Mexico City. 29-year-old Perez operated an online shoe-selling business and local law enforcement believed that she was tricked by someone posing as a prospective customer. Upon reaching the rendezvous spot in Benito Juarez, accompanied by her friend Eduardo Arturo Trejo, Perez was ambushed by armed men on motorbikes. She and Trejo were caught in a hail of bullets while they were sitting in a car. Perez was shot at least nine times and her friend was shot twice. Both succumbed to their injuries. The targeted hit was motivated by Perez's ties to La Union Tepito, a criminal organization known for various crimes in the Mexican capital, including kidnapping, extortion, drug trafficking, and murder. Perez's boyfriend, Alexis El Alexis Martinez, was one of the cartel's leaders known for ostentatiously displaying his ill-gotten wealth on social media. He was assassinated in March of that same year in Zapopan by a gunman posing as a delivery driver. Perez was the latest of several cartel member girlfriends to be targeted and killed for their connection to the organization during the span of roughly 12 months. Perez was part of a trio who called themselves Las Novias de la Union, along with Valeria Diaz and Nayibi Musa. Mustafa. All three had been killed in brutal fashion, although it wasn't clear if the hits exclusively came from the cartel's rivals or also from within the organization. Number 8. Sidney Loof On November the 15th of 2017, a Snapchat post captioned, Ready for my date, marked the last time that anyone heard of 24-year-old Sidney Loof. Aubrey Trail, a man in his early 50s and his girlfriend, 25-year-old Bailey Boswell had convinced the woman to meet them through a dating app. Loof was murdered and then dismembered by Trail. He, along with Boswell, put 14 body parts into garbage bags, which they disposed of along a highway in Omaha, Nebraska. Both were arrested after the remains were discovered and the trial that ensued was marked by disturbing events and revelations. Three women testified claiming that Trail was a cult leader who'd convinced them he was a vampire who could fly and read minds. He and Boswell, whom he allegedly referred to as his queen witch, had recruited them through Tinder. The women had engaged in group sex with the couple, but had also been convinced to take part in an antique scam that Trail was running. They were forced to adhere to strict rules and were physically punished if they deviated. The women claimed that Trail and Boswell would frequently talk about murder and torture as a way of strengthening their supposed supernatural powers. Trail had changed his story multiple times, but ultimately claimed that he'd accidentally strangled Loof to death with an electrical cord during consensual intercourse, in which Boswell had also participated. A forensic pathologist concurred that Loof's injuries were in line with such a sequence of events. Trail and Boswell were found guilty of first-degree murder. According to the latest updates on the case, Trail's sentencing has been postponed and it's unclear whether he'll be given the death penalty or life in prison. Number seven, Marina. In April of 2020, a disturbing incident was reported in the northeastern city of Kharkiv in Ukraine. A 59-year-old man whose identity wasn't released 
was on a first date with a 31-year-old woman, only named as Marina. The pair were drinking alcohol on a bench near an apartment block when a fight broke out between them. According to Marina's version of events, the man had tried to grope her bottom. Enraged, she pulled out a large kitchen knife, which she'd reportedly been carrying for protection, and stabbed him in the head. The blade penetrated roughly six inches into the man's skull. Witnesses recorded what followed from afar. As the man was lying unconscious with the knife sticking out of his head, Marina started going through his pockets. Before fleeing the scene, she tried to pull the knife out, but was unable to dislodge it. The victim was taken to the hospital. While no updates on his condition have been released, doctors argued that his chances of survival would have been higher if Marina hadn't tried to pull the knife out. The woman was arrested and charged with attempted murder, which, if found guilty, carried a prison sentence of up to 15 years. Number 6. Jennifer St. Clair In December of 2018, Florida woman Jennifer St. Clair died after falling from the back of her date's motorcycle. The man's name wasn't released by the authorities, but it was reported that Sinclair had met him online. He picked her up to go on a first date and was reportedly joined by two other couples, also on motorcycles. They were only supposed to be gone a couple of hours, but the 33-year-old's family got worried upon realizing that she hadn't returned. After she'd fallen from the motorcycle on Interstate 95, her date fled the scene abandoning the woman in the middle of the roadway. According to the authorities, St. Clair was struck by several cars. Florida Highway Patrol officers claimed that the woman's death would be treated as a traffic homicide. Number 5. Ivana Smith In December of 2017, the naked body of Dutch model Ivana Smith was found on the sixth floor of a high-rise in Kuala Lumpur. It was concluded that the 18-year-old had fallen from an apartment on the 20th floor owned by Bitcoin millionaire Alexander Johnson. He and his model wife Luna admitted that they'd been intimate with Smith prior to her death, but claimed to have been asleep when she fell. CCTV footage would show the three of them returning from a nightclub at around 5 a.m., with Johnson carrying Smith in his arms while Luna followed behind. Several hours later, the teenager was found dead. Kuala Lumpur police found no foul play and initially viewed it as an accident, while a local coroner recorded the death as misadventure. A second autopsy, performed in the Netherlands, would find traces of drugs and alcohol in Smith's system, as well as Johnson's DNA under her fingernails. There was also bruising on her arms and trauma on the back of her neck, believed to have been caused before the fall. It was suspected that the teenager could have died prior to plummeting. The Johnsons denied any violent incident with the model, as well as giving her drugs, and left the country after being cleared by the authorities. Smith's family appealed the initial ruling, and nearly two years later, Malaysia's High Court ordered the case to be reopened as a murder investigation, caused by persons known or unknown. Number 4. Nicole White In June of 2015, Nicole White met Jonathan Harris through a dating app. The 28-year-old divorcee from Orting, Washington, initially went out with him in the company of other people. They ultimately decided to go on a first date, just the two of them. On June the 20th, White's severely decomposed body was found by a volunteer K-9 unit at the bottom of a ravine. South of Lake Kapausin, the body presented severe facial, arm and chest fractures, which a forensic anthropologist determined were consistent with being stomped. Harris, who some described as having major anger issues, was interviewed by the police but denied having any implication in the woman's death. However, a breathalyzer had been fixed to his car due to a past DUI. He had to blow into it to start the vehicle and each time this happened, the device took a photo, complete with a date and timestamp. Investigators matched trees in the photo's background to a location pinged from Harris's phone on the night of White's disappearance. More evidence emerged after the authorities got a warrant to search his home and found clothes covered in the woman's blood. Harris eventually admitted to beating the mother of two to death and was sentenced to 26 years in prison. Number 3. Keith Collins In March of 2016, Keith Collins was stabbed to death while out on a first date with Jovi Pillapil in Sydney. Collins and 39-year-old Pillapil had met online and were having dinner at a Korean barbecue restaurant. The woman's ex-husband, against whom she'd taken out a restraining order, showed up at the establishment. Alexander Villaluna jumped over a counter 
and started stabbing the pier with a hunting knife, covered in blood. The assailant then calmly walked out of the restaurant and waited to be arrested in a nearby shopping mall. According to witnesses of the brutal attack, 54-year-old Collins was stabbed twice in the neck and once in the stomach. His injuries proved fatal. His date was stabbed in the chest by Villa Luna and subsequently rushed to the emergency room where doctors managed to stabilize her condition. Number two, Leon Shaw. In December of 2017, 53-year-old Leon Shaw went on a date with a woman whom he'd only met a few hours prior. They visited a friend of Shaw's who was a tattoo artist in Pierce County, Washington. They'd been drinking heavily when the 47-year-old woman, who wasn't named, asked the artist to tattoo a flower on her chest. A violent argument later erupted, the circumstances of which are disputed. Some sources claim that the woman and Shaw's friend had gotten intimate. However, the artist maintained that Shaw had started the fight because he was drunk and trying to grope the woman while she was getting the tattoo, causing her to fall off the table. Whatever the case might have been, she ended up punching Shaw, who slapped her in return. The woman stormed out while only wearing a t-shirt and got into Shaw's truck. The keys were still in the ignition and as he came out to find her, the woman ran him over with the vehicle before crashing into an embankment. When the emergency services arrived at the scene, they found Shaw dead in the driveway. It's unknown whether the woman, who was taken to the hospital in critical condition, had run him over on purpose or accidentally. She recovered but claimed having no recollection of the incident. Methamphetamine and barbiturates were reportedly found in her system, but Pierce County prosecutors chose not to file criminal charges. Number 1. Mina El Huari For several months in 2014, French woman Mina El Huari had been talking to a Moroccan man online. They eventually decided to meet and 25-year-old El Huari arrived in Fez on May the 16th. After checking into a five-star hotel, she went on a first date with her suitor, whose identity wasn't released by the authorities. Everything was going well until El Huari suddenly and inexplicably collapsed. Her date, overwhelmed by panic, started thinking of ways to dispose of her body, but in the rush, forgot to search for a pulse. Instead of calling the authorities, he buried her in his backyard. When she didn't check back, El Huari's family filed a missing persons report with Moroccan police. They interviewed the man and found the woman's body in a shallow grave on his property. It later emerged that El Huari had been an undiagnosed diabetic. She hadn't dropped dead, as her date had initially assumed, but fallen into a diabetic coma. This meant that El Huari was buried alive and subsequently suffocated in the grave. The man confessed and was charged with involuntary manslaughter. Thanks for watching. If you had 10 points to build the perfect partner, considering looks, intelligence, humor, and charisma, how would you distribute them? Let us know in the comments section below.